All right. So like a oh my god, that was soup. Uh, let's take a look at Final Fantasy Type Zero. King and Sink. So this is going to be an interesting preview uh, because a new ability school was introduced at this event. So that's, uh, I don't think that's something I've dealt with before. Well, not for a while. Oh my god, look at the new skills. Whew. Okay, so we have some new skills too. Uh, not just for the new ability school either. Um, a new five-star bard ability. Uh, up to large party mind up, skills with goddess hymn uses. So this is exactly like uh, the other bard abilities that we do not have in global yet. Um, where every time you use this ability, it increases the st statistic by 10%. So you use it once, it increases everybody's mind by 10%. Use it twice, now you're increasing everybody's mind by uh, 20%. And it overwrites each time, but it grows each time. Um, well, obviously meant for holy teams, uh, white mage holy teams that use uh, the mind statistic to get their multipliers or um, to act on their multipliers. Uh, next up is five star white magic, Dia Da. Three single target holy white magic damage, medium chance to minor and peril holy. Um, uh, from what I've seen of the multiplier of this thing, it's pretty much going to be an instant shatter, just like the, the offering abilities. Oh. Uh, 9.21. So three attacks uh, with a 9.21 multiplier as opposed to holy which is a 12.0 with four attacks. So is losing that uh, like 2.8 multiplier worth the 25% chance to inflict minor in peril? Good evening, Strider. Or better yet, let's figure out someone that can actually make use of this. Maybe not an instant shatter because there's a lot of white mages. Let's say you're using, um, I don't know, something cool like, see that doesn't even work. I was gonna say Sarah's USB because it provides, uh, where would I put arc? Uh, S. Well, the thing about Imperil is if it if it procs once, that increases all the damage of your entire team, so it's not just uh, the caster. So if it, if it was just a single person, then yeah, you would need it to proc twice in order for you to get re see, see return on it. But... I think as long as it procs once, then you're probably getting enough. I just It is better than the offerings, at least. That that multiplier isn't pathetic like the off offerings are. Because it's a basically 75% of holy, where the offerings are not 75% of the snipes. Not by a long shot. Yeah, snipe 3.42 offering. Less than half. That's awful. That's just awful. I think uh, Diada might be might be worth something. So I don't think that that multiplier loss is that big.
Okay, uh, so now we're moving into Heavy Combat, which is the new uh, ability school. I'm not going to call it Heavy Combat. I'm just going to call it Heavy. Um, I have no idea what this going. This is going to be called when it comes to global. I. This is one of those situations I hope that they change our imp interpretation of the of the Japanese because heavy combat just sounds stupid. All right, grand charge four uh, or five star four single target earth dark uh, self heavy charge up to two uses major power earth dark. So what um, what this is showing us right away is that this is going to be a um, a charge up mechanic obviously and the other two abilities at five star expend those charges so what you're probably going to be doing uh, if you're not using any soul breaks that work with this and I'll get to that uh, when we get to the banners because that's that's going to be important one of the characters that occurs in this event uh, pairs up heavily with these abilities and that's what I believe that's where I feel you're going to find all the value from heavy combat. Um, Berserker sounds, yeah, that that would be my preferred term for it. Um, so the five star abilities that use the charges, uh, Gigant Swing does three to eight single target uh, earth physical and the number of hits scale with the heavy charge count and removes heavy charge. So this is not really specific, so I'm going to go into specifics. Thanks to you. Thanks to our gospel and Lear's spreadsheet. So it does three, four, or eight single attacks. Um, 1.0 multiplier, 1.0 multiplier, reduced multiplier, but it's understandable you're moving from three, four, to eight. So the reduced multiplier here is more than made up for uh, with the eight attacks because the final multiplier is 7.04, which is about uh, Super Soul Break USB entry damage these days. If the user has heavy charge 0, 1, or 2, so zero uh, charges of heavy charge, three attacks. One charge, four attacks. Two charges, eight attacks and then it resets your charges. Causes heavy charge zero to the user. Uh, Blast Burn is the second ability, and it's just the, the exact same thing. Uh, lower multiplier, but area of effect instead. And they're both earth-based. Um, but I think this is a hint right here. Uh, Grand Charge, the first ability I talked about, being earth and dark, I would not be surprised that in the near future we see uh, some dark versions of these Earth abilities. So, without thinking about uh, the soul breaks that if, uh, that pair up with these on the banner, how do I feel about these abilities? Uh, not too great. Not too great. I think um, they're okay, but it, it, it's kind of like the power chain full charge combo to me. At least it's elemental. Uh, but what you're doing is you're giving yourself uh, a 2.2, then a 2.2, and then a 7.04. If you add those up together over the course of three turns, uh, it's actually not that impressive of a multiplier. Um, I believe you're going to need soul breaks to pair up with these in order for it to be any good. You can't just... Hey, I got an Earth, and now I can use these abilities. Yeah, I, okay, I'm sure you can, but it's not going to do anything special. Um, but don't think poorly of the uh, ability school because I did some I did some theory crafting in our Discord, and uh, I believe that the soul breaks on this banner would pair up to, uh, together with these really well. So uh, we'll get to that when we get to. Uh, so I went over all of those, but the I didn't go over the four-star one. Uh, it's just one single target and not elemental version of um, Grand Charge. This is uh, it's just for new players to get introduced to the the ability school. Like so, if they pull that person or sink and her stuff off of the banner, and they want to be able to use heavy charge with her, um. They would, they would use this. Like, if they don't have, you know, the orbs to use the five-star ability. That's what that's for. Otherwise, 
Just shatter it. Uh, so we'll get into the two new characters now. Uh, one is King. He is a machinist, but he does a lot of things. He, right off the bat, reminds me of Laguna, but looks like even better because he has support 4 access. Uh, Combat 4, Support 4, Machinist 5, Sharpshooter 5, Black Magic 3, White Magic 3. Um, so, Combat 4, Support 4, he can Life Siphon or Wrath, whichever you prefer. Oh, congratulations, Vex. Um, I like that, right off the bat. Like that. Uh, Machinist 5, that's great, because, you know... I really feel highly about the Machinist abilities, and looking down at his record spheres, it looks like he, they want him to be a Machinist, so that's what he is. That's nice. I like those abilities. Uh, Sharpshooter 5, that's a... Uh, I think that's just to keep on theme. Uh, King is a is a dual-wielding gunner in uh, Type-0, uh, so he's just, you know, meant to be a Sharpshooter, but they gave him Machinist. Um... I doubt outside of submissions you're going to be using Sharpshooter on him all that often. Because he's a lightning machinist, and Sharpshooter has uh, two elements overlap with machinists, which is ice and fire. But uh, Sharpshooter has water, unique to it, and machinist has lightning. So King being a lightning machinist means that he's probably never going to touch Sharpshooter. Uh, Black Magic in 3 and White Magic 3, um, eh. You know, there's those dinky little abilities that Black Magic and White Magic can use that are sometimes useful. <laughs> there, there you go. Uh, other than that, I don't see this uh, being uh, effective at all on him. Uh, Dispel, yeah. It's one of those dinky White Magic abilities that's sometimes useful for some reason. I don't know, I've used Dispel on Sid Reigns before, so it's not like it's completely out of... Not, it's, not, it's not useless. But what, what we're looking at here for his primary capabilities, Combat 4, Support 4, Machinist 5. Uh, stats? Oh. Oh, it's level 80 stats. Okay. Well, that, that's a lot better. <laughs> I was like, 168? That's extremely low. Uh, but that would be if it was a, his, his uh, attack at 99. Let's see if we uh, have some updated stuff on him Lears for his stats. Uh, we don't. So we'll compare it against some other people. Uh, King, I, the most... The direct comparison I can think of would be Laguna. Same attack. So, I love, love Laguna, so I'm gonna love King. So, there we go. Uh, what else has he got going for him? Well, lowish HP, but he's gonna be a back rower, so that helps. Ooh, low defense, but he's gonna be a back rower, so thank goodness. Um... Uh, 5581105. About on par with Laguna there, too. So that's fine. Chance for attack to turn into Spark Offering? Oh, gross. Uh, record dive for King. 9% uh, Machinist damage? Fine for him. Uh, once we see his USB, we'll understand why. Uh, would prefer if it were gun damage, because he's always going to be using a gun. But machinist damage is okay on him. Um, almost all of his damage is through abilities. His uh, USB entry itself is kind of nothing next to it. Okay, so next character, Sync. Uh, combat 5, Support 5, interesting. I didn't know that she got support 5. Uh, heavy 5 and also the, with the black magic, white magic. Uh, also with a 168 attack, higher HP, which makes sense. She's kind of, she's kind of burly. Not physically, but in the game. Uh, and a higher defense, too. So she's a, kind of a tanky support with a decent attack. 
What is Laguna's attack? 206 at 99, so what I expect both of them have to have a 206. Um, yeah, that's... She's one of those uh, supports that doesn't pay attacks. That's a, that's a pretty high attack for, for a support character. Uh, yeah, his uh, King's USB is a lightning, lightning gun. Um, this is interesting. <laughs> RM1, extremely low chance for super large attack damage up. Uh, all right. Large heavy combat damage up. So this is good that she comes, she starts right out with this because this is our, this is our heavy damage, uh, or heavy character. So she gets the 40%, um, Legend Materia immediately. That is good. Uh, okay, well... I think this is less effective on Sync. We'll, we'll see about that. Uh, I'm gonna go into her USB a bit when we get there. But she gets the exact same thing as King did, which is 9% school damage and 3% weapon damage. Okay, um... The following characters now have access to Heavy Combat 5. Garland? Well, first I'm going to go over these, because this, I think this is important. Garland, Dark Cecil, Zed, Gabrant. Mm. Anyway, dark characters, which kind of goes with what I said about his, uh, I mean, the, the five-star charge ability. Uh, being dark in earth I think we're we're looking at possibly some heavy dark characters coming um, okay so wall uh, maybe they'll make him good someday who knows guy guy is nice doesn't he have a USB though Yeah, I think he does. Leo doesn't make a lick of sense if they keep on with his holy motif. Uh, Angeal uh, uh, doesn't do anything right now, so they just need to give him something. But, I mean, he's like a blank slate. They could do whatever they want with him. Uh, Ward is a dragoon. But he does earth damage, right? So, earth and wind. Does Gladiolus benefit? No. Uh, he's definitely bent towards night. So is Miliadul. So, yeah. Uh, out of all of these, until we see uh, the future of this ability school, honestly, I, I think the only person that really benefits here is uh, the character that comes as part of this event. Um... The only one, and I tossed this around a little bit, was Cloud, but unless Cloud has a way for his Soul Breaks to work with the Heavy Combat abilities, uh, he he actually just benefits more from using the Earth soul, uh, the Earth Spellblade rather than uh, using the Heavy Combat abilities. So, um, so it's not really that, it's not like the Super Earth Revelation for Cloud. Uh, Legend Spheres for King and Sync. Uh, we have Lightning Damage up. Good. Double Blind. Double Blind. Earth Damage up. These are just good uh, Legend Spheres. And Legend Materia. Uh, by the way, what I meant about like someone like Gladiolus being bent towards knights... He gets an LMR too that gives him the 25% chance to dual cast knight abilities. He's not really he's not really meant to be using heavy combat. I guess it's nice in a Sid mission if you, you know, don't have soul breaks for him or something. So to have that ability school, but Gladiolus is a knight. Uh okay. King and Sick. King gets uh, physical attacks deal X percent more damage when equipping a gun. That is uh, 10%. And that's fine. That's fine for an LM1. LM2 is Haste and Nitsakas 3. Uh, already like this character. I hope he gets good soul breaks. Because I love that 
LM2. That never gets old. Sink. Physical attacks deal 10% uh, more damage when equipping a hammer. Sure. 50% chance to grant heavy charge plus one to the user after using heavy ability. This. This is very interesting. And this is what this is what makes heavy combat a good ability school for some people is if they can abuse or accelerate the charge rate. Um this is one piece of the puzzle. Uh, if she can use... If she uses the charge ability once, she has a 50% chance to be able to use the 7.04 multiplier uh, ability on the next turn. Now that rotation, going one after another, is so much better than uh, going charge, charge, attack, charge, charge, attack. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, her USB further increases the effectiveness of stuff like this. And uh, I believe that's where we're getting to next. Yep, it's banner time. Uh, we have four six stars on the banner. Two are Rems, and one is King, and uh, the other is Sink. So uh, first off, we have the Outsiders guns uh, for King. And as mentioned earlier in the preview, it is lightning damage up gun. Which is uh, really good because he's a lightning machinist. Endless Waltz. That was a, it's a great anime. Uh, 12 single target, lightning non-elemental, range physical damage, and lightning, self attack and defense plus 30%, and machinist ability double. Uh, this is why I was talking about in King being having all of his damage. Uh, focused into uh, abilities it's it's about this uh, we I don't is there any bad ability double characters I can't I can't think of any um, so you use Tempest Snipe and you use Tempest Snipe twice he he has 12 attacks every turn uh, at like a 7.0 multiplier as long as his USB is active and I believe, yeah, we just went over this. Oh no, he doesn't have dual cast. <laughs> that would actually be just, that would be Orlando levels of gross. Um, anyway, this is, it's very simple. Machinist ability double makes this probably one of the most powerful lightning soul breaks in the game. Uh, he gets a great LM2. He gets a uh, good dive all, all together. Um, King is a very, very good character, and he's a support four character, too. Uh, that's uh, really nice. Really nice. Uh, this is a big, big hit on the top of the banner, as far as I'm concerned. All right, um, next up we have Sync. Shock Hammer. The two is Earth Damage Up on her hammer. USB, Whirling Mace, 10 single target Earth, Wind, Physical Boost, and Earth, Self, Heavy Combat Boost, and Heavy Charge Boost. Okay. This is all pretty interesting. So, if you were to gain Heavy Charge, you instead gain 2 in instead of 1. That changes everything about how this character is played. It, I think that plus her legend dive brings it to the point where I'm not even charging with her anymore. Because she has a 15 or 50 percent chance to charge one every time she uses a heavy charge ability. So why bother with the 2.2, right? When I could carry something like. Uh, Life Siphon or Wrath in my first slot, and in the second slot, just have Gigantic or Gigant Swing. Um, and use this ability even if you have no charges. It's still a 3.0 ability over three attacks, which isn't bad. And you have a 50% chance to be able to use this uh, for eight attacks the, the turn after. Uh, I really like that. 
I like the fact that she doesn't need to use the charges because she can generate a ton of charge naturally. I think that's a, that's a really powerful earth capability. She does lo effectively lose her LM2 for that. And that's something to consider, right? But here's another thing. You use Gigant Swing with two charges, and you lose your charges, right? Well, what if you're LM2 procs, and you get two charges back? Now you're super soul breaking every single turn for 7.04, a 50% chance to keep that chain rolling. Uh, I honestly, I really like that. Seven point oh four over eight attacks. That's, you know, it's not ninja levels of good, but few things are. So I'm, it's it's a it's kind of unfair to compare it to ninjas. Um, oh yeah, and something we haven't even gone over yet is heavy combat boost. Is, uh, I believe. Just a 30% increased damage. Oh, it's a rank boost. So it's 30% increased damage at R5. Uh, which I would assume... What are we looking at here? What's our orb expenditure? Major powers? I feel like by this point in the game, people will have their... If you've used a lot of major powers on stuff like uh, spell blades at the moment, you're probably going to have a fair amount of major powers by the time this comes around. This is, you know, four and a half months from now. So if you do pull for this banner, uh, you'll probably be able to invest in her. But anyway, uh, you know, I don't, I, I really like this USB. Um, I'll be able to evaluate it again, you know, by the time this comes around. But I think the only thing that really competes with this and probably blows it out of the water are Earth Ninjas. But they, they made ninjas gross. And nobody knows why. Oh, Orlando. But Orlando's Orlando. Yeah, Heavy Combat is the new ability school. So anyway, this is good. Uh, it's kind of got a question mark on it. I'll, I'll put it that way. Because we don't know what this ability class is going to be like in the future. Um, so and it's a good thing this is a distant preview. We don't really have to worry about this right now. Unless you're playing Japan and then... Um, honestly, I think I would side on the it being good and staying good rather than it falling off. So the next two six stars are uh, a repeat of Rem's USB, uh, which I have gone over. It's very good. It's just a, it's a high quick cycle. Um, so she just holy, 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 holy really quickly. Um, and it does a lot of damage. And that's that. Uh, and here's a nice thing to add on to a high DPS character like Rem. Just give her an OSB. Uh, and it gets a higher uh, multiplier when it exploits weakness. That's perfect. Um, and what's really nice about this is the dagger that it comes on is a plus holy dagger. You know, I was talking about this in Discord earlier too. I was trying to think of, is there any real significance to uh, plus holy being on a, uh, a mind dagger. And I actually just, I, I wasn't able to think of any um, because the current plus holy stabs in the game uh, belong to Alma and Ark and possibly Minwu. I don't remember Minwu. Uh, it might be though. But anyway, that's all stuff that the offensive, you know, people that use the primary mind statistic, that's all the stuff that they use anyway. 
So it being on a dagger is not that significant. The, I think the most significant thing here is that finally um, Rem, as one of the premier offensive white mages, uh, does have a plus holy weapon that shows up on a banner with her stuff. So she's not as uh, reliant on the other, uh, on Alma and Ark. If you were just pulling for, you know, Rem, you wouldn't have to be, you wouldn't have to be like, uh, you know how Refia is right now. Refia is very dependent on Zell's relics. His BSB, uh, his USB both have plus fire on them and hers don't. So she wants Zell's relics. Uh, so that's like spreading out the pulling that you need to do, right? Well, Rem doesn't need to do that anymore. She has a plus holy weapon on uh, a banner of hers. So that's a good USB, uh, or a good OSB with a, a good USB. Uh, so even if this is just a good USB, we have, uh, honestly, in my opinion, three big hits at the start of the banner. And on, I think this is the first Type-0 banner that I've felt this good about, uh, at least right away. We'll see that um, <laughs> if that pans out later. Sorry. Uh, all right, something to notice is that Sync's uh, USB does not have end earth on. Oh, wait a second, it does. Never mind. Forget me. Don't know what I'm talking about. All right, Sync's BSB. Uh, heavy combat damage, 15% for three turns. And uh, one single target armor breakdown. Hey, yo, Will. Eh, uh, it's, a, it's a BSB. Uh, not really that thrilling. It's something for a character. It's plus 10 attack. Uh, King's Academia Uniform. Uh, 8, 12 single target lightning fire. Okay. Uh, and lightning burst mode. Uh, an additional hit when hitting weakness. Okay. Oh, he gets one of these, huh? One single target, lightning fire, and self machinist too. I'm going to have to see the multipliers on these. Because this may be actually a, a decent... Uh, a decent BSB thanks to that instacast. Kind of like uh, Laguna in his BSB. So the Instacast is 1.85. So what you do is, just like Laguna, you use this ability once, give, grant yourself Machinist Instacast 2, and then use Tempest Snipe instantly. And then use this ability again instantly, and then use Tempest Snipe instantly, and then you just go back and forth until the end of the burst, uh, which you want to use, since this is Machinist Instacast 2, this won't affect uh, a recast of a Soul Break or anything like that. So you want to use uh, your two Tempest Snipes. And then go back into recasting. Um, what's the multiplier when exploiting weakness? Uh, 2.55? Eh. Uh, this is more like... It's kind of like a... Well... Yeah, I feel like this is a, a newbie thing now. And these are decent commands. It's just, it feels like that these are for people who aren't, aren't able to hone Tempest Snipe. Nah, I think I think the second command's pretty good. Being able to instantly instantly attack. It's never a bad thing. Hey Mike, what's going on? Yeah, there's always new players, so it's I mean it's not not a bad thing for them, that's for sure. I'm trying to just trying to say if like 
this is something that would be desirable to like a, a more veteran player. Like, you know, global players I'm talking to right now are going to be veterans, no matter what, by the time this banner rolls around. Um, but it's, you know, it's just, it's a better than average BSB. What's the seven? Lightning resistance. Oh, well. Titus USB and Pain BSB, congratulations. Uh, water armor, right? And, uh, and uh, Titus USB is obviously great, so congratulations. Oh, and 100 gem knocked a super soul break? Wow. Some good luck for you. Uh, so next up, Rem and her BSB. Uh, it stinks. Um, it's the nine. Holy damage up. That's nice. On light armor. That's actually not bad at all. The relic is nice. Uh, burst soul break not. Ace? Why is... Is Ace not on the second banner? I guess not. It's poor Ace. Uh, Ace's burst is here, and it's interesting in the fact that it's zero cast time. I don't believe it's fire damage up, though. No, it's not. Uh, so it's zero cast time. Eight single target and party physical blink. This could be an interesting thing to pair up on some teams. Uh, but I personally don't think that it's all that powerful by itself. Um, I think if you're rocking Ace's entire kit, then yeah, you're, you're probably going to find some sort of good use for it. Because zero cast time on the on the entry is really, really nice. And then the commands are just stitch in time and short cast time and additional hit. Oh, yeah. Is it, oh, LMR2. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, okay, so Synx, LMR, start battle with Ender Earth. How do you feel about that? And Dominion Helmet, 13. Earth Resistance. How do we feel about her starting the battle with Ender Earth? Does it benefit her more than, you know, simply life siphoning or wrathing to start the fight and then using her USB? I don't know, maybe with her... Nah, I don't think it's all that great for her. So, it's... This turns into one of those, I grant myself 80% increased damage on my first USB cast. Because I don't see her using heavy combat abilities before USB is active. It might be... Yeah, you know what? It probably is. If you have her LM2. If you have this plus her... Uh, this and Earth plus her LM2, I suppose you could skip Life Siphon and just go to and use the charge ability instead. It's not going to be as much Soul Break generation, but it's going to be a lot of damage. Because then you're, you have the possibility of generating two charges too. So maybe you can use that 7.04 with a 50% 50, 50 increased damage from the Unearth before you even get to the USB. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, King, start battle with Enlightening. Uh, what do I feel about that? Do you have the same thing going for you, King? Maybe. Maybe uh, you use Spark Offering with King to start the fight. As a, as a Soul Break generator. Because I think what you don't want to do is use Tempest Type. Because he's, he's an ability double, right? So those uses are kind of valuable.
So maybe you start the fight by using Spark Offering. Hope you get a couple procs. He can, he has a, no, he doesn't have dual cast. I don't know. All right, he's insta-casting to start the fight. Don't you just wrath three times and then go for it? I don't know. Three spark offerings wouldn't be that bad either. What's the soul break generation on that? Because it's, it's, the problem is he has wrath access. Not just life siphon. Seventy, so one hundred and five soul break generation, as opposed to one hundred and eighty from wrath. I think, keep it simple, stupid. Start them off with Wrath or Life Siphon and... Because I wouldn't even want to use Spark Offering. Like, we're, what, we're, I mean, think about what we're trying to do here. We're trying to take advantage of uh, Enlightening. Yeah, 1.2 White Multiplier. Never forget. Never forget. So yeah, like, like Ricky says, it would be... Ideally, you would want to use Tempest Snipe. And Tempest Snipe is precious. Well, any ability is precious when you have an ability double going on. Okay, so that could be good. Uh, not elemental legend material relic, so that stinks. Uh, but Ace's LMR2 Flame Armlet is a Fire Bracer. Uh, and he starts the battle off with N Fire. Now we can go back and look at his BSB and see that that's, that's a lot better. His BSB becomes a lot better with N Fire thrown in the mix. Uh, zero cast time plus 80% damage, and then you can use the, the burst commands to good effect or, you know, melt down with them. Like most sane people would. Bliven? Yeah, I am. Someday. It's not something I can put off forever. I'm just kind of seeing how far it can go. Uh, so anyway, this is a really good LMR for Ace. Really good. Uh, Ram's Lunar Armlet. This is her LMR too. And as I was talking about with Sketch not too long ago, um, this is a Chase LMR. Paralyzed Resistance. That's kind of cool. Uh, 50% chance to cast an ability. Single 5.05 magical WHT type that deals holy fire non-elemental damage after using a holy attack. So it's a it's a single attack. Um, for a 5.05, it's fairly decent damage, but it's a 50% chance for it to happen. So right off the bat, we're going to have the effectiveness of this. Um, so 2.5. Uh, 5.2. And here's my issue with it, is that that 2.52 is uh, attached to Holy, which is a 12.0 multiplier. Um, so you're using her LM2. You're using her LM2 if you have her USB. That's, uh, that is it. That's a foregone conclusion. So if you're using your LM2, that means you have access to her LM1. So now we're comparing her LMR2 to her uh, LM1. And I think, I, I personally think that her LM1 is at least on 
on par with her LMR2. If you take 10% of Holy, you get uh, 1.2. Obviously, it doesn't add up to the to the 2.5 of her chase, right? But her chase does not proc on soul breaks, and uh, you're probably going to be using two soul breaks with Rem over the course of the fight. Um, the Holy Damage Up does. So where I see uh, her LMR2 becoming useful is if you're capping on Holy, which is probably not an easy task. It is a four hit ability. Uh, but if you are capping on Holy, then the Holy Damage Up doesn't really do all that much other than for the Soul Breaks, uh, where this will, because this is an extra attack. Um, but if you're not capping, I don't think you care. Because this is just as good, if not better, than our LMR2. Uh, and since this is an event that uh, debuts characters, uh, it has Super Soul Breaks on it because they want to give at least one Super Soul Break to every new character. Uh, so it's not, you know, a bunch of bursts and a bunch of Legend Materia and that's it. Uh, on this banner, we get King's Twin Magnums. Uh, trigger Finger, Zero Cast Time, Six Area of Effect, uh, and Pearl Lightning. Um, that's something. I think that's kind of neat. Uh, like, if you got his LMR and his super, he could probably be a pretty decent character on a lightning team. And remember, he has wrath access. So, as long as he's not overriding a 50% attack buff, uh, he can wrath out some pretty quick zero cast time and peril lightnings. Uh, and that could be effective depending on who he's being paired up with. So this super is not useless like a lot of supers are. I mean, it's not... I'm, I'm, I shouldn't talk it up too much because it really is just a super, but um, it's a it's a consolation. Uh, Sync, Mithril, Bangle. Uh, six, Area of Effect, Enemy Hyper Break. This is just... This is Derpalicious. Uh, so what do I think about this banner in its entirety? Uh, love the top end, as I said. The bursts... Uh, don't care, don't care, don't care. Aces isn't bad. With his LMR. Which is on the banner, so that's nice. But you would need his LMR for that to be good. Um, so, the typical birth section, most of them are just kind of there. They're for newer characters. They're, you know, people who don't have, don't have the ability to hone their shit yet. Um, LMR section, I like it. It's fine. It's fine. I'm gonna say it's fine compared to I like it of this because this pairs up with a USB on the banner. Well, this just pairs up with a, a decent BSB. Uh, and I don't really like it. It's of, of questionable value. Um, and then super section. So this banner is a toughie. It's a toughie because I think by this point in the game, a lot of us are going to be so veteran that we really are just going to be looking at how good is the top end of the banner and are the legend materia good. What's an issue with this banner is that it's for new characters, so we get supers. Let's chance at good LMR. But the LMR aren't that bad. Can you 
Can you hope for anything more from a banner these days? Are there any banners that actually have good bursal breaks on them? Arc sucks. Ingus does have a good BSB. Onion Knight does too. And this is a good elemental relic. Right, right, Ricky. That's what I was going to look at. And we don't get that here, do we? Oh, we do. We get plus holy on Rem. And that's one of the bad BSBs, so that does redeem one of, one of the relics that would have been a, a loss. So King's BSB isn't bad, Rem's is elemental, and Aces is good with the LMR on the banner. So this, I guess this is as good as you can expect. Check uh, Final Fantasy V. Yeah, I, that probably should be the gold standard of uh, event banners. Where the, the Onionite banner is just an outlier. Bursts. Uh, I know this is plus earth. I know this is plus ice. Yeah. Kelger's model 17 is also plus earth. Yeah, this is probably the gold standard of a, of a good banner. In this, like, format, in this era. Good soul breaks mixed with good elemental gear. I'm having trouble with this. Like, if I can say, you know, this is... I think it's close enough to Final Fantasy V banner that makes it pullable. If you need the, if you need the, the elements in question. Um... So what, what are the characteristics of this banner? Very strong physical lightning, strong physical earth, and very strong uh, white magic holy. I'm in. I, I, think, uh, I think King and Rem are that good. I mean, like I said, like, was it last night? About that tactics banner that had, you know, Gaff Garion and stuff on it. It was just full of A-tier stuff, but it's hard to suggest a banner that doesn't have anything truly exceptional about it. Well, this does. King and Rem are truly exceptional. And uh, the top end of the banner is dominated by them. So I, I like this banner. I do. It's the first Type-0 banner that I actually like. Uh, well, no, it's not. I like the first one. I just, uh, I saw myself going towards physical fire, and, um... I don't know. In hindsight, I think I should have... probably angled towards... just going for aces things and hoping to get deuce, because I, I think I underestimated deuce for a long time. Just... It's just been kept getting better and better. Physical Holy is pretty stacked, Ricky. And it does have Orlando. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. Because Reigns and Onionite's uh, Sage Mode USB is a tri-buff that 
is plus mind. So Ram gives uh, with um, her X mode gives herself plus fifty percent mind and plus thirty percent mind from Sage mode. That's that's enough buffs for for a white mage to be um, effective. So I'm going to move on to the second banner. Uh, nine Machina and Queen. Oh, and Deuce. Ugh. This banner hurts. Ugh, Deuce sticks with her LMR. Doesn't get an LMR too. I am wounded. Okay, so nine, Shapeshifter. USB Whirling Lance, 10 single target. Wind, non-elemental jump. Imperil winds. Uh, attack defense plus 30% and chase Jaragoon abilities with Wild Lance. Well, let's see what this chase is all about. We can't. Let's see if there's anything to compare it to. There isn't. No idea what this is going to be. Well, yeah, I mean, if you've got March on Orlando, then yeah. But maybe that, you know... I, I guess that's why I go into, like, if these things are useful to you, then good. But if you've got Marsh and Orlando, then, you know, that's not good for you. Yeah, well, I agree. So, yeah, I mean, if you got Marsh and Orlando, then stay away from the first banner. All right, so we don't really know what's going on with that chase. Um, but I can tell you right now, having a chase attached to Dragoon abilities, not already not a fan of that. I really like the instant jumps mechanic that Kane and, um, and Sid get and Fang. That's great. But a chase attached to Dragoon abilities means that's a chase that must go off after a cast time and after a jump timer so it better be obscenely powerful for a chase or a just finding it hard to care so it could be good it could be good probably not good uh, and that is that would make sense for something that nine gets and it is not an elemental weapon either so already you know see where this this banner is going uh machina osb Great. Multiplier scales with spellblade abilities used. Well, Machina sucks, so uh, having an OSB for a sucky character. Whatever. Uh, Queen OSB, a multiplier increases with weakness, of course, because Queen's actually a good character, so she gets the good qualifier on her OSB. Uh, and Queen's USB is also here, and that is good as well. Uh, she gets a, a weird trance mode for some reason. Uh, I don't know. She goes class rep on everybody. Uh, she's just she's just good. Um, and these things are okay. But they don't, I don't think they redeem these. Like, if you're going for physical lightning, this is probably the place you want to go. King is, is better. He does it better, and he has an elemental weapon on his USB. But, here we go. Here's a fantastic BSB. I don't know how good this is going to be at this point in the game. 
Um, it may not be as good as it is now, but it's hard to see because there's, we haven't received or gotten anything like this yet. There's no healer BSB that gives that buff yet. So it, I think it stands to reason that it's still going to be good. The only thing that could push it off is if healers are just so absolutely uh, have to be geared towards defending against statuses. Which would make Deuce's great healing plus buffing uh, ha actually have to compete with people like Larsa. And that's, I, I bring that up because that's a very real possibility. Um, or anyway, this is actually a good BSB. Just just plain good. It belongs on the top end of the banner. Uh, Queens, uh, I went over it. I don't think I care about it. Party critical 50, okay, party critical 50% isn't bad. Yeah, they are all, all status heavy, but there's other ways to defend against statuses. Like using Unicorn Magicite and uh, Affliction Break, it may not be necessary to use Larsa, but he will be a part of some compositions. And I say may because I don't personally know. Maybe it is necessary to use Unicorn, necessary to use Affliction Break, and necessary to use Larsa altogether. Um. Or Iris. Okay, Machina's BSB is bad. Oh yeah, what are Queen's commands? Eh. It's just party critical. It's not like... That's a 25% damage increase to party. Eh, you know what? No. Uh, my goodness sucks. Nine sucks. Queen LMR section. Uh, low chance to double cast lightning abilities. Good. Good. And her uniform is small lightning damage up. So that's uh, that's a really good relic. Uh, my goodness sucks. Nine sucks. Star Battle of Unearth. Low chance of minor imperil wind when using jump attacks. Nine is like super imperil. Isn't nine like so supposed to be like a a Night Dragoon character. It's like protects people, if I remember correctly. Uh, Deuce's LMR stinks. That's why we're talking about wishing, wishing she got in LMR 2, because uh, her LM1 and LM2 would absolutely beat out this in almost any situation. Uh, Rem's LM1 is really bad, and that's not good. And to top it all off, even though there's no new characters on the spanner, we get Machina's Super Soul Break. Um, and in in normal situations, I would say, well, that sucks. This banner gets screwed over format-wise. I can't because Machina's Academia uniform is a plus Earth light armor, <laughs> along the, with the fact that it's a very good Super Soul Break. Uh, the entire party gets high critical and haste and party resistance plus 100%. It's, uh, it's actually just better than some of the Legend Materia relics and bursts on this banner. It's, uh, that's a, that is a really good pull, as far as I'm concerned. It's the best thing Machina has. The banner overall, not good though. Uh, Deuces LMR would increase the duration of the new Bard stuff um, to 13 seconds instead of 10 seconds. I don't know if that's all that useful. Maybe it gives her an extra turn, but at the same time, I feel like if I'm using those abilities, I'd want to stack them faster. So, you know, say it, it lasts 13 seconds. So you stack it to a 30% buff over the course of 30 second fight you finally hit 30 percent at the end i think um whether it's 13 or 10 seconds it's not going to matter uh 
Right, exactly. Allegro con moto is awesome, but it's turn-based. Well, a lot of my mithril is going to be going into the Orlando Marsh Banner. So I hope I I cover my holy there. Any comments? Am I pulling on Alma's event? Yes. Yeah, I hope Marsh and uh, Marsh and Orlando fall into my fingers. It's probably why I'm foregoing the coming tactics banner, so I have more mithril to dedicate to a banner that helps me more. Because my holy is... it barely scrapes by three star. And if the four star holy and darker is as crazy as they sound, yeah, I'm gonna need something a hell of a lot better. I need Ramza, Marsh, and Orlando. Alma, I honestly don't really care about. I, I do as a as a fan of tactics and it and an Alma fan, but uh, I don't I don't like what they did to the character. I care about tactics. I care about a lot of that banner. That's why I'm stocking up Mithril for it. That banner is S tier, baby.
<laughs> that would be uh, one hell of a ship post. No, honestly, I, if the onion banner is the best, it is the banner to end all banners, sort of. If we're judging everything uh, based upon that, then nothing is S tier. <laughs> The Tactics Banner Dragon Flame has some issues. They're easy to overlook because of the strength, the disgusting strength of some of the stuff that's on the banner, but... Gafgarian's BSB, or Landu's BSB. Oh, animations, shoot! Okay. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> That's what was going through my head, Ricky. It was like, oh no. King's USB. Oh shoot! Forgot to switch back. The video has been going for 30 seconds. I am positive that you guys knew that this was going on and just didn't tell me. Thirty seconds, thirty seconds. I didn't really care for it, and what makes it worse is the the voice was okay, but we're not going to get that. They, they have to strip that out because of restrictive friggin' licensing. Uh, so that's actually not that, not that great. Uh, animation wise, you know, uh, no lemonade is far, far better. Uh, King's BSB. Oh, 
That's good for a single strike. I liked that. That was good for five hits. And King Super. Queen's OSB. Okay. The animation sucked, but I wouldn't care if we just got the voice acting, because Queen's voice acting is awesome. Uh, I, I don't think uh, very highly of it, Kappa, unfortunately. Uh, it Oh, no, shoot, her USB? Like it. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you said BSB. Uh, her USB is nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you can get it cheap, sure, Blyven. I liked it. You gotta like... It's definitely uh, an action movement game, though. It's There's nothing zero turn-based about it. Uh, sync, USB. I kind of liked it. That's the five star ability when it's fully charged. Okay, well, I like the animation of the ability. Hey, I'm feeling that. I thought that was a lot of fun. I mean, Sync was very clumsy to use in the game, but... This little girl swinging around this hammer bigger than her didn't really get old. Uh, Six BSB. Not as good as her USB. Sync Super Soul Break. Oh, 
Alright. Like that one, though. Like that one. I like the little, little animations the sync did there. Nines USB. It's going down the list step. Machina OSB. I don't want to watch this, but we've got to watch this. Look at him charging it up so he can deal max damage, because that's all you do in these videos. And Rem's OSB. Finally. Not bad by itself, but it reminds me too much of Terra's OSB, who I always thought had just an awesome OSB, and it's not as good as Terra. Yeah, this banner didn't have that great for animations. I think Sinks was good. And uh, the heavy combat abilities animations were good. They really are, like, it feels like they leaned on the voice acting a lot, which sucks for global, right? 